The Arawa Youth Consultative Forum has faltered the recent call by the indigenous people of Biafra on the Middle Belt people to join it at, with its sit-at-home campaign, warning that no section of the North should be party to a deliberate politically motivated plan to undermine or worsen the nation's current security challenges. The AYCF uh, said that since the governors of the Southeast seemed satisfied with the activities of IPOB, they hope they will continue with the sit at home for another 10 years. Now, they also went on to add that they will resist the exportation of IPOB activities to the North. It called on Northern leaders and governors to step up action in order to ensure this outlawed terror gang called IPOB that it does not inf infiltrate the region. And that the governors must ensure that any northerner who sh shuts down his shop in solidarity with IPOB, that shop should be sealed forever. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ihechiku Ibeji, a political analyst. Thank you very much, uh, Ihechiku, for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, viewers. All right. Also joining us is Alex Obunaya. He's the National Publicity Secretary of Ohanez Indigo. Thank you very much, Alex, for joining us. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm going to start with you, Alex, because you, the, the, the Northern youth are, are making a, a very serious um, you know, statement here saying they do not want to export what's happening in the Southeast to the North. And they're also saying that it seems that the governors in the, in the Southeast are satisfied with what's happening in the Southeast. So my first question is, what exactly is going on in the Southeast? Because we keep hearing these stories and we're getting these reports of, of you know, um, either some killings, unrest. We've seen two, um, a, a high profile kill, uh, a, a, a murder of the former um, NAFDAQ boss. Her husband was killed recently. We also saw the house of uh, an APC chieftain here in Lagos that was burned down. And we've, see, we've seen se several stories. So what exactly is going on? in the southeast going on is um i want to believe that every nigerian knows what is going on in the southeast uh but sometimes they don't want to um state it as they, as it is the point is that um certain people feel that they are not wanted in the um, governance structure of the country that they are marginalized if you can look at the security architecture of the country, about four, out of the 14 of them, no Igbo is in any one of them as uh, hitting any one of the security architecture in the country. If you look at the grade A ministries, you find out that no Igbo is found worthy to occupy any. And also the statement made by the president when he, have, when he assumed office as the president and commander in chief, that he favorably disposed to those who voted for him and favorably disposed that they didn't vote him. His body language showed that he didn't, he was rather unhappy with the Southeast. So uh, they are feeling that as a president, is uh, a, a president and like a father to all. The issue of he voted me or he didn't vote me should not count. If you look at the uh, appointments made by the presidents, you see that they are lopsided against the Southeast. So they are not happy about it. And uh, that's why the agitation, that is why the agitation. So that is the source of the agitation. Um, um, so we are saying, we are help you understand. So whatever thing that is going on is as a result of agitation. That's okay. what is going on. Uh, uh, fine and well, you're telling me that this is an agitation. But I'm trying to understand the part of the agitation where you kill your brother, you destroy your own businesses, you destroy buildings and facilities that are in your communities to help your people. I'm trying to understand how these types of agitation would help your cause. Yeah, what is happening in that killing, um, you know, in any just like when, we ha when they had answers, so criminals cashed in on that and hijacked answers and gave it a criminal coloration. The same thing with the agitation that is going on, creating a siege environment. And some people went to bring in some other people from outside the southeast that are perfecting the killing. Who are these people who went to bring other people outside the well, southeast? Well, by, by what we had from investigation going on, 
the people who are the assassins are not Igbos. Uh, they are not Igbo people. You know, they are hired from outside the southeast to, to settle some scores, sometimes business, sometimes politics. So, but the truth of the matter is that the, the, the agitation has created a siege environment in the southeast. And in a siege environment, there is chaos, there is anarchy of a kind, and everything is being let in. Hmm. So, that is the position. Interesting. Ihe, let me have your two cents on the situation because um, he said these are agitations. These are uh, people who seem to not be satisfied with how government has been run and the South is getting the short end of the stick. And j just recently, um, there's been tension in Uwiri, uh, There's uh, and there's also been tension in Abba uh, as how hoodlums chase pupils and traders out of schools and markets again. I remember sometime last week or two weeks ago, we interviewed people in the Southeast and they said they were tired of the sit at home because they needed to make money. They needed to be able to feed their families. And these people have decided to go back into their places of businesses and schools have reopened. But there are people who are saying, go back home. It does bring to question who really is running the Southeast. Is it the governors or according to uh, the Ohaneze chieftain hoodlums? There are, there are two great groups of people. Sorry, you know, sir, sir, sorry this like, question is for Ihechi. Ihechi, Ihechi. We'll, we'll come back yeah. to you. <laughs> you know, and thank you. Very, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, I, I, I said it here some time back. Um, agitations that turn into situations whereby people are being killed become a bit criminal because what happens is that it models up. You don't know who's in charge and who's not in charge. And that's exactly what's going on right now. Um, I think one of the biggest uh, facets of the whole thing is the fact that um, the Southeast um, um, in the whole, in total, are losing so much in terms of economic, economic activities. There was a, a report in the newspaper for some time, last week or so, there about that uh, the Southeast has lost about 50 billion. Um, but aside that, um, they're, 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 the, the, the losses in terms of economic activities is on 25 Loss of lives alone, and um, these are pre uh, precious uh, people who are, who are dying. Teachers who can no longer go to schools to teach. Students who can no longer go to schools um, to, to get it. A lot of these services are predominantly, um, um, are predominantly civil service, so to speak. And then the ones that are business areas are completely shut down. So those are the areas that we need to look, uh, look at. Now, for, the, for who are the people running it, um, you see, it's now modeled on. Because for each killing, um, uh, somebody has to come up and own up. So the, if the IPOB has to come up and say, we are the ones who did that, and then another criminal uh, gang will have to come up, is that what it means? But as it is now, it's model up, it's confusing because there's nobody coming to own up on what's going on. So we're seeing different pockets of violence coming up at different sets of time. You, you get what I'm saying? And that creates for a real major Problem, a real warlike situation. You know, I think at this point, if I may, I think at this point, the governors need to take greater charge. It's not enough for them to say uh, students should go back to school, go back to shops. We are not providing them with security. We tell them to go back to schools, go back to shops. The same people will chase them back. Huh. It's, not enough to hold, it's not enough to hold meetings. And then after holding meetings, when you hold meetings, and then uh, after holding meetings, you come out and you say that this is what you have come, this is your uh, conference, this is what you've decided. You have to put action to that meeting, to works. You have to find a way to coordinate your security architecture to protect the people. At the same time, you have to also dialogue with the people. You have to dialogue with the people who are, who are agitating and bring them together with the central government. And you also have to do with central bodies, central organizations like the Ohanes and Dibu to seek the advice. Because you need to find a solution and fast. But let's let's look at let's look at the conspiracy theories that are out there. Um, because I'm going to go back to Mr. Bonaya. But before then, he made some, you know, a theory that this might be something that's sponsored from the outside. That that there, this might be the hand of Esau or sorts. You know, trying to make the southeast look bad. As, especially at a time where they're asking for, uh, you know, a spot on the table. Uh, do you buy into this conspiracy theory, and why would you think that, um, if you do agree, um, why would any um, 
outside hand or influence be causing this sort of mayhem uh, in the southeast? Uh, my, 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 my point in asking in answering this question, but I'm, I'm going to answer it, it's very, very straightforward. And that's because the beginning of the agitation was um, based on the IPOB's um, you know, agitation for more, based on the IPOB's agitation for their leader who has been castrated, so to speak. Now, um, in every such situation, you can't get this kind of hijacks. But who do you get to? Who do you get to eventually blame? It's the person who starts it. So how do you then figure out? And that's where the problem lies. How do you then figure out who's a criminal and who's not? And that's the problem. So you can't, you can't answer this question in a one size fits all. Mm. Criminals will definitely infiltrate. Any fertile ground for them to operate, they will take that opportunity. And that's why the agitation must be in such a manner that it is clear-headed. You must be able to identify who the leaders are. And you must try as much as possible not to include criminal activities in it. And that's exactly what it is. If you recall, even the NSAS pro protest, right down to when the sitting, the sittings, the panel sittings were going on, the leaders of the NSAS always came out to say, look, we're not part of the criminal activities. These are the fortunes who infiltrated. Mm. So there was always that, even there was no belief, there was always that clear demarcation. And that's exactly what it is all about. Okay. So in every war, the shrine of a bullet and go anywhere. And that's what's going on right now. Back to you, Mr. Bonaya. It's, it's incredible that, and, and, and it's a question sort of that um, EH, EH is asking. Um, if IPOP is not responsible, why is IPOP not speaking, off more, speaking up more often? Why is IPOP not asking for some form of um, a handshake across the table or maybe even asking for a dialogue of sorts to happen? Because if we think or you think or IPOP members think, and supporters of IPOP think that there are outside, there's some form of outside influence. Why are they, not, are they not stepping up to the plate to douse this tension and go about it in a better way? Because like EHE has said, they, the Southeast is, of course, still going to, one way or the other, benefit from the negatives that come, uh, the ne negative outcome of all of these agitations, deaths bad economics, and, of course, destruction of life and property. Why is IPOB not having conversations? Or maybe Johannese might step in and be the middle ground for these conversations to be had instead of bullets flying across the heads or over the heads of people. Well, evidently, IPOB has issued statements. They are not uh, in support. They are no longer in support of the seat at home. They issued the statement. When Dr. Akwini uh, was assassinated, IPOP came out openly to say it's not the handwork of IPOP. No, they are speaking. In fact, they are regretting that some of these are being heaped on IPOP. They are already making statements that they, are, they don't have hands in what is going on anymore. But is that enough? So of, putting out statements, is that enough? Is that yeah, enough put, to, do, no, no, to deal you know, with the you are, issue? No, I'm taking you, your question. Say, so why are they not speaking out? So they are speaking out. They are saying they, are, they don't have hand in the killing. They say they are no longer interested in the city at home. They made it clear. I hope you understand that this, the city at home is no longer by them. But you still find some other people enforcing it. You know, that's why I say some other people are cashing in on, that, cashing on the stage environment. They begin to enforce it. You know, creating problems all over. So as a matter of fact, it's, it's a difficult scenario now. Because it is IPOP started it, there's no doubt. But it's already, it has gone out of the hand of IPOP. But from the meeting we attended today in Enugu, we have also resolved that all the hands must be on deck to make sure that um, we, what is going on in the, in the Southeast will not continue. We are working, we have resolved that to go into it, to wade into it, you know, to do everything possible to ensure that. Uh, the South is no matter the towns in South East. We are working hard towards that as it is now. Well, I want to say thank you to you for being part of the conversation, Ehechi. We want to say thank you. Um, thank you to you, Alex Obunaya, for thank also you being much, part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being part of the conversation tonight. We'll see you tomorrow on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. Have a good evening.